The question of Poland joining the euro has been mentioned, and while I won't deny that Poland has had some benefits from the depreciation that happened in the late part of last year and uh, the early part of this year, the risks were far greater. If that depreciation had run out of control, if the Polish government had not been able, through its careful fiscal policy, which allowed us to uh, obtain the flexible credit line from the International Monetary Fund, to stop and then reverse that uh, trend, then depre uncontrolled depreciation would have uh, threatened the stability of the financial system. And I think we have to understand that in the long run, or even in the medium run, it's impossible to have, to safely have, your own currency in a zone, in an area of free capital movement, if that currency, or if the economy that that currency serves, is as small as the Polish economy. Because the natural process that we're going to have over the next couple of years, medium, in the medium term, maybe I should say, is a tendency that we saw before the crisis, a tendency towards appreciation. If you have a tendency in the medium term towards appreciation, you have a natural tendency for people to wish to obtain credit, whether it's households or businesses, in foreign currency. And if you reach the stage that, for instance, Hungary has reached with the kind of proportion of foreign currency liabilities in the, uh, in the economy that the Hungarians have, then you have all the disadvantages of having your own currency without effectively many, any of the, of the advantages. Any depreciation will cause what is effectively debt deflation, will result in the fact that Depreciation will have no, no effect in stimulating the economy, but will undermine the health of the financial system. And therefore, being a medium-sized country with a small economy, um, with its own currency, with perfectly free flow, free movement of capital, is, an, is in the medium term an unsustainable position to be in, an unsustainable situation to be in. And that is why joining the euro has to be Poland's strategic goal and will continue to be Poland's strategic goal. And I think it's um, nice to be able to say, and I've been told this by Jean-Claude Trichet himself, that the exceptional resilience of the Polish economy in this year of crisis, which didn't surprise us, we not only expected it but relied on it, we forecast it, expected it, and relied on it. But I think it came as a surprise to many of our Western partners, and I was told quite clearly that it has dispelled the deep-lying worries that there were, that even if we satisfied the Maastricht criteria, there was some deeper weakness that might emerge in the face of a crisis. It's turned out that in the face of a crisis, it's not the Polish economy that has the deeper weaknesses. But obviously that doesn't mean that we won't have to satisfy the mastery criteria. We will, and we expect to have to do that, and we shall in due course. But it's important that this crisis has tested Poland and the Polish economy, and Poland has not been found wanting, and our partners are fully aware of that. I think um, in terms of future architecture, it's extremely important that a single European regulatory structure and supervisory structure is being created. Poland has supported these developments. As a host country, we have the most to lose by the present chaotic and fragmented supervisory system. Particularly, a particularly important part of that structure will, of course, be the so-called Systemic Risk Council, which will be built around the European Central Bank and the Bank of England, which are, and this Systemic Risk Council will give warnings about macro, perceived macroprudential risks. We are supporters of this 
of the creation of the, European, of the Systemic Risk Council. However, we have one concern, and I'd like to just flag it here. The Council will be issuing recommendations. It's not entirely clear what the force of those recommendations are. If those recommendations have no effective force, if people don't in fact do what the recommendations suggest, then they'll simply be a wish list, rather like the risks that are flagged by the International Monetary Fund in the area of financial, financial stability. If, on the other hand, they are acted upon, whether they're formally legally binding or not, but if they are acted upon, and we would hope that they would be, then there's the question of the responsibility that goes hand in hand with that power. Because if I may finish by quoting Spider-Man, with great power goes great responsibility. And that is the principle that we have to remember whenever we're constructing new institutions. Um, otherwise, we have what economists rather boringly call externalities. And I think we need to remember that uh, we in the European Union, when we come to creating that or building that, uh, the structure of that systemic risk council so that it functions effectively. Thank you very much.